Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I actually had a artist that had been on the show before contact me and say that they wanted to come on and talk about how there is a slight change in their work, how there's a subtle difference in what they had been doing into just it opened up the style that they have, the mood that they have, the the way their project is going. And it kind of made them think about the future and what they wanted to do. It's so interesting in the fact that it's just one little difference that really kind of puts all the work that you have into just a strange perspective, a new course, a new goal. And uh, we just kind of chit chat about that because we've already met. So the whole thing starts out very casually. We just we just start talking and go from there. So here is our conversation starting right now. I'm Pranav Soup and I'm a painter. Over the years, the style or the work changed a little bit. So I thought we should like talk another episode and talk about what I'm doing now. Yeah. So yeah, you contacted me because you've been working on new stuff and I would like to know about it. So um, first of all, how did this, how did you, so you've said you've, you've changed direction or changed styles, like what changed in what you're doing? Uh, not, not majorly, but okay. it's just about like the, the techniques changed or the area of focus. Like I was like using a lot of black outlinings beforehand to like make everything crisp and clear yeah then now it's more about uh the figure and loosely letting it open for the uh for the viewer to just enjoy without black outlining like you can see and this is like a work in progress painting i'm working on right now it's mostly it's about more about contrast than just putting colors in different section of the painting and uh giving it a black outlining to confirm its visibility. So that's a little change. I think for me, it's a big change for because it make it makes the whole thing more alive, kind of. Okay. What what made um, you think of that? Like what what prompted this idea to switch that? And also yeah, what what prompted this idea? It's <clears throat> I was like one day I was like moving in a direction for making thicker, blacker outlinings in my painting process. Uh Uh, And I was seeing like it more look like more graphic, but also like more cartoonish because like it's like different stickers putting together in a on a canvas, you know, Mm -hmm. like the the stickers have bold black outlines and colorful uh, sections inside. And to me, it was kind of feeling like it, it was like different kind of stickers or stickers on the canvas. And I thought I should like step back and see like how I can make them without the outlines and how would they look and how, uh, what the process would look. It takes double the time, but uh, the, the interaction of colors edge to edge makes it more vibrant and more um, crisp kind of like when you see you you can like enjoy the environment instead of like just here it is painting kind of the feeling okay the uh, it's funny because you said uh you were doing the black outlines because it made it crisp and now you're realizing that paying attention to where the outline of the color goes is actually having that effect yeah. for you like what what was happening was like when uh when the colors interact uh with with the black outline the every color gets like super pop out super bright Mm -hmm. but when a yellow color interacts with the red or the blue interacts with the red when they are touching together i sense like in color theory it creates like a kind of a vibration for your eyes to like makes you hard to like look at for a long period of time so how i design my paintings is mostly about like where the viewer can rest their eyes, but at the same time, when they are like scrolling through the painting, there will be moments when they want like not to look at specific sections of the painting. And then there's like a whole um, a whole uh, perspective thing I'm working on, like landscape, you would see like more new landscape vibe, like mystical landscape, 
in my newer paintings with a similar message of like manifestation, confidence, um, and achievement. Like the sense of achievement uh, is like a subject matter which I usually deal with or want to like paint about. And but with that subject matter and the new technique of like interacting color with each other, like when colors are touching with each other, it's makes the painting more vibrant in a in a different sense. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like the colors are vibrating uh, when you're like scrolling through and yeah. Yeah, the yeah the colors are the main focus rather than here are the outlines and there are colors in it. Yeah, it, instead of like more like a mosaic kind of feeling, which my uh, my focus was in my last when we last talked, mm -hmm. the more focus was like the whole painting looked like a mosaic, mm -hmm. like, and like filling colors inside the black outlines. But now there's like a little fluidity which makes it more interesting to me. And I'm really excited about it, actually. Yeah, it, it's it, it's interesting because uh, speaking of this, it doesn't seem like it would be a huge change. But as anyone who's like, uh, the way that you describe it reminds me of, uh, as a cartoonist, if you've ever colored something in Photoshop, you have a line layer and then you have the color layers underneath. And all of us yeah. have turned off the line layer to see what it looks like with just the colors underneath. And it's just a wild change. But to a lot of people, it would just be like, well, it just looks like the lines aren't there. You know, it, <laughs> but it is like a huge yeah. change for those that work in that environment. It's, it's mostly for the experience of the painting. Yeah. Like, uh, the experience changed than the visual aspect. Visually, you don't miss much with the new ones, but at the same time, you gain so much by viewing them in person and you feel there's like an energy coming out. It, there was energy before, but I was like kind of like, to me, black outlinings were like controlling the vibrations of the colors, like, mm -hmm. uh, like holding the reins of something. And then when they're gone, the whole characters are interacting with each other, touching their outlines uh, to the outer surface of the character, and it makes it more more uh, vibrating as they're they are like alive in a sense. Yeah, no, it's it it is a different choice, and it changes a tone uh, when you don't use outlines, or even uh, if if you just sort of color or paint and then it just ends where the line would be. I mean, it, it does tonally change things and it can even be a stylistic change as far as going from to something seeming design-like to drawing-like. Um, yes. And have you found that it has changed the tone of what you're doing? Like uh, from the paintings you have made, doing it in this manner has like the tone or the feel or the theme changed mm. as far as what the paintings are as well? Yes, uh, the the theme of the painting also changed a little bit. Okay. Uh, back then, when we were talking, uh, before that, we were like, I got married before that, and so my wife was here. So I, I had somebody. Uh, I was not alone. I had somebody to talk to. I I had friends, but you know, when you have somebody whom you can share the life with, or when you can share like ups and downs, what's happening in life, yeah. it's more like uh the closest proximity you can say so i was like really happy i was like good i the life was amazing so I, my subject matter was mostly about the happiness of being together and it was about like gardens and uh gardens and happiness and smiley faces smiley flowers in the whole scene but uh then it changed because like um then I, I was like, I was thinking about like, what about my career? How can I grow? What are the new questions I need to deal with? And I realized that I need to understand uh, that there are downfalls. Like I was doing shows, but then this is New York. There's like a, a lot of uncertainty I have, like how to make connections, the, the language barrier, the uh the you know references when you talk to somebody in uh, new york you don't know their childhood or what references they are making in their jokes and you right. you take time to like understand those so those things are different so you when you're like in a meeting you're in a group and you're like talking with them and you're like trying to crack a joke and they don't understand they don't laugh and you feel weird 
what's happening. It, it adds up to like the social anxiety thing mm-hmm. for being an immigrant. So those things were like ha- making me a little worrisome, like what's happening? Because I was from Wisconsin and over there people were like super chill, super nice. They were <laughs> considerate. And New York was very different. So those things started like coming up on me and I thought like I need to like understand those feelings and try to like uh, understand what should I talk about in my paintings. So that's how I sh- the subject matter changed. So now I'm more about like building up the confidence, saying about like the achievement, you need a goal, you have a goal, you need to achieve it. So keep making. So I'm making like a lot of trophies. You can like see in the background, there's like a guy holding a trophy okay. and then there's a guy holding a flag and we are like in a kind of a photo booth, kind of a landscapey photo booth with like fireworks on the in the sky. If you, you might not know this, but like there are fire, fireworks. Okay. It's like the last thing I want to see like myself uh, kind of like manifesting about it, uh, manifesting about life, like what I want in my life, like a moment when everything is crazy. Yeah. And things are very happy, the ideal things. So I'm painting about like ideal self for something. Okay. And you had talked about how some of this style also was looking forward on your career and what to do. And so this is, so as part of this, is there going to be a theme? I know you've done themed uh, projects and multiple paintings in a row that are themed. Is this something where like, is this the first painting you've done or is there more? Are there trial and error paintings you did? Like you didn't just start right away doing it, right? Yes, yes, yes. So it was like a six month period or like, Four, uh, five to six month period when really? I did like very small works. Okay. And uh, it was mostly about like, I need to paint landscapes and a direct image of like something. So what happened, like I started with like a very erotic images, like a boy and a girl having romance, like a erotic romance in a pool or a lake, mm-hmm. or they are on a beach side or they are uh, in a forest with like mythical creatures around and they're like uh, romancing. So I feel like uh, being an Indian, I have the, like the community I belong to or where I come from, the sexual topics or romance or love is like a taboo kind of thing. Then people don't generally talk about it in public with everyone, Okay, you know? So I was like making paintings about love, but it was like very symbolic and very, uh, hidden like everything was like hidden but now with this series i i called it honeymooner so i i made like super direct images super uh, like just to explore the landscape part okay um it was like uh, i was like trying to push because i was like getting bored of like what i was doing i, I needed something new mm-hmm. so i made that change over the like four to five paintings with different experimentation i found that like how I can remove the black outlines and how I can create like a mystical landscapes. So that's how it started. And then I took a chance on a big painting and now this is the third one I'm working on. But uh, yeah, that's how. And then airbrushing is another cool thing I started doing. Wait, airbrushing, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, It (laughs) is amazing. It's wild uh, to see and enjoy how gradients work now. But uh, it's a tricky, tricky process. Yeah. <laughs> Airbrush. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of your gradients have been hand done. We actually discussed that last time about how you're meticulously doing uh, dot paintings and uh, meshes and different things like that by hand to create the gradients. But now you're using. So when did you? When did this discovery of adding an airbrush element to it come about? And how? I think. Talking to you last time, a few months ago, I yeah. was like, I when I was talking, I was like just thinking like what I'm saying. And I've been saying that for from grad school or like from India, you know, like I was, the style was growing. But then when I was talking to you, I was like, this is the thing I was, I'm talking about a lot. This is a really good thing. But what about I switched it the whole way and the gradients become airbrush and using like hand gradients with airbrush, air, like airbrush together would 
give me like different results. And that's how it started. And I bought an airbrush. And then I started like just experimenting with on the paintings. And now it's coming up how to use that. Now I'm understanding how to use it in my sense, uh, in my paintings, in my works. Yeah, how did you do that? Because when I was growing up, airbrushing was a thing people would talk about where you could magically make things look real and stuff like that. But then as I got older, airbrushing was a thing that were at theme parks where you could get your name in sparkly letters on a t-shirt. You know, yeah. it had two different purposes and both of them were like very confusing to me. So how did, how did you uh, how did you sort of incorporate this style and really figure it out? Um YouTube, <laughs> just watching YouTube videos <laughs> and watching like uh, people spray painting names or making an apple and shading it and like making things real or like using stencils to like uh, create something, you know, and trying to like understand those and then try to understand how I need it in my work and where can I use it because I already fill up my paintings a lot and yeah. everything is super tight. So where is a possibility to use it. So what uh, what I'm doing is uh, I'm using it to create contours, like out around the sh characters. There's like a spray paint, or inside the character, like there's an outlining of a airbrush kind of, which gives like a little 3Dness to the to the character, or like creating shadows, which are like very subtle, but you can like see it when I shift it to without black outline characters. So mm -hmm. you can like see the contrast with that airbrush thing. So that's how it's coming up. I don't know where it would go, okay. but it's uh, it's kind of like a kind of a first step yeah. uh, of using airbrush. Well, and it becomes more of a tool that you're just used to using and you can go to it in different ways where even when you're thinking forward, it could be something that you're like, oh, but with airbrush, I could try this to achieve that. And like, if anything, it will all just kind of grow and grow in the uses and knowledge that you have from your own personal experience. Yes. Uh, uh, transparency is one thing you can like use airbrush to like go over some, something and create a transparent cloth. Oh. I used to do it, but uh, I, I used to do it, but then it was like more about flat underlying paints, but now with the airbrush, you can go over so visually it feels like it's on top uh -huh. instead of like different colors putting together to create that effect so that's or maybe i can like show you this i have like a little example okay uh, you can like see i was like practicing uh fireworks so like putting black paint on and just like creating the pattern of like a uh, fireworks with white and just putting a airbrush like just right on like areas it creates that effect of something is like blowing up like the light mm -hmm. so something like this came out and now i'm trying to like i will experiment more with the with this kind of thing so how it would look in my real paintings let's see okay so that's one of those uh that would be one of your practice canvases kind of like when you were studying the landscapes uh, when I was studying, I was like trying to like think on this canvas. This is one canvas that I'm using right. from like months. It's just one where I practice, like try to like understand color, how they are going, trying to understand pattern a little bit. But then I don't think in like practice kind of thing. Okay. So I practice with real painting. Yeah. So I need to, I have a challenge. I need to like make this work. And if it doesn't work, I always have my older skills to go to and like make it real but I, that was a challenge to like just stick with this no black outlines landscape and how i can like find the vocabulary to like describe that and it um it, over time it started like generating and uh, take more time than before but over time i understood the vocabulary and now it's growing now it, those bushes became landscapes and then mountains came in and then understanding water or uh, with the study of like beach area or understanding sand uh, or all those things like gave me like little nuggets and now i am trying to like put them together for a bigger canvas to like make a bigger painting yeah and the reason I ask that too is because um, with painting, it's different than say 
drawing because uh, with drawing, you you know, the way it used to be is you just had a sketch pad and you would just turn the page, turn the page, and then, up oh, that's filled up. I'll go buy another one, start filling that up. And now with just being able to draw on a, an iPad or a, a laptop or something like that, it doesn't matter. You can just go, ah, I'm done, delete it. Like, I'm yeah. not going to use that. But with painting, with trying things out that way, I was curious, like, are you continue? are you going like, well, this is I'm trying out these landscapes, but I am going to use this. Or do you just go, ah, I'm, you know, and you have several just like unfinished that didn't work sort of canvases sitting around. Like that's, that's what I'm getting at is like you practiced it, but are you using all of them or do you get rid of them if they don't work out? Yeah. I, I made them into paintings like, and, okay. and learned like where, what was the sticking, sticking point, like where I uh, got stuck and how I can manage it, how I can, how I can like improve it. Mm -hmm. So I started another, I don't, I don't like leaving canvases because canvases cost a lot yeah. and then you are using colors that cost a lot. So I don't believe in like making something and putting in unfinished and letting it go and turning it back because over time I would grow and I would, wouldn't consider that a good painting and I won't even work on it. So instead of doing that, I try to like finish it and if I got get stuck, I work for like two to three days to like understand how I can get over it by visualizing. And but then if it doesn't work, then I go back to my old school style, like what I was doing, how I can fix it with my already have knowledge and try to fix it and then start a new one and find a newer structure where I can push that limit to find a newer vocabulary, which I couldn't in my last one. Okay. So that's how I keep pushing with every single painting. So every painting gives me like a little new thing. And over time with like six months of progress, I, I was like, I have a little more vocabulary of making bushes and making flowers and making uh, little, uh, little things on the painting, like a, like a hidden things in the painting. And so those vocabulary, I brought them for a bigger painting and that's how it started like, and then like pushing it even further on a bigger canvas. I think you can do best work on a bigger canvas. I like it more to make big paintings because you have more surface area to like work with. Yeah. I, I find, uh, it, for me, it could go either way. It's really, you know, working with a, a larger setting or a smaller setting. One, it will be like, oh, if it's a larger setting, I can really work on detail. But then I'm like, how am I going to fill out more? And on a smaller setting, it's like, I wish I had more room to put things in. So it's, yeah, maybe I'm just a glass half empty <laughs> type of person. That is, it totally, <laughs> totally makes sense. Like it, sometimes you are like making something on the canvas and you feel like you started making a character and then you realize... Oh, I wish there there was more space and uh, for the feet. You know, yeah. you need another feet or something, and then you have to like find creative solutions to like figure it out somehow. Yeah, or redraw the whole thing. Um, mine are like super structurally placed. That if I mess up in a drawing, then I have to do it the whole thing. I can't like change one character mm. or do something. Yeah, or find a creative solution to like. I, I call it like I'm being lazy to like finding a creative solution to solve something is better than like redoing the whole thing. So okay. it's being lazy kind of. <laughs> now with this, uh, with this new style that you've been doing, how many, how many paintings have you done so far uh, using this new technique? Um, like um, four, five. Okay. And do you yeah, have it's still growing? And and how many, like, are you building up to something? Are you working up to a, fin like, I don't know if there's a beginning, middle and end to when you create projects yes. or there are. Okay. So you're working up to something. You actually have the next few paintings in mind already? No, uh, not, uh, I don't know what's going to come next okay. because I don't even know how to like finish this one. I'm like <laughs> still figuring out, okay. but it's, it's like, it's more about uh, once this is finished, then I would take like a day or two off and then visualize another thing where I can go next. So for this one, my goal was to like create something night. Like this is a night scene because mm -hmm. I never did a night scene. I have done like, evening scenes like where the sun is there or clouds you can see the clouds or something but a black sky 
is like something I never, or something black on this scale of night sky, I have never done. So understanding that and understanding the color vocabulary for it. So that gives me a challenge. And then I'm trying to like figure it out, like how I can do it. Okay. Uh, so this is like a challenge, but then there's like a subject matter of achievement or success or something which I'm trying to portray for myself where the characters comes in and like they try to give that message. And for the next one, I don't know what I'm going to be dealing with to find those characters. But then I would find like, maybe it would be like a morning scene with like a, like an afternoon when the sun is to the top and everything is super bright and then there are like edges. Maybe that would be another thing I was thinking about and let's see. Okay. And are you even thinking yeah. ahead to how many of them you want to do? Kind of like with, uh, yes. I mean, it, oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. Like at least like 15 of them, like at least 15. I always think about like 15 uh, to like 15 paintings or 17 paintings in a series. Okay. And by the 17, I would get bored and like try to find something, something new after it. So Right. It keeps me like engaged with what I'm doing and how I can push because uh, I need to be ready when the time would arrive and everybody would be looking. So I need to be ready what I, what kind of vocabulary I'm dealing with so I can like make more of them yeah. later in life. Well, and I asked that too, because it's kind of, it made me think of, uh, it's the same way like a musician or a band making an album, even though you can put as many or as few songs on an album as you want. But for some reason, the process is like, okay, we're going to do this many. And then even as you're doing them, you're still creating song after song. But sometimes while you're working on an album, like you said, it's just like, all right, I'm bored with this album, but I want to do something different. And it's like, well, you can, but for some reason, having them in a grouping changes it to, well, it's got to be tied to this and it's not something new, even though it is new. I don't know. I'm thinking, yes. you get what I'm saying though? Like it's, it's a yeah, confusing concept. Yeah. Some, sometimes you like playing music and you like find a way, like maybe like few seconds of like uh, drums and guitar working mm -hmm. together. And you feel that this, these many like 15 seconds are amazing. And you will like build, just work on that and oh, build yeah. up a whole album from it. So that's how I think in my painting. Like I'm working on these 17 of them and they would, uh, they would come when they would come. And once they're over, I would find like special moments in every single one of them. And I will pick those and add some new and find a new vocabulary and like start making a totally new series. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's keep, keep it fun. That <laughs> exactly. keeps you engage and you know, you keep enjoying what you're doing. Uh-huh. And so what, what is your plan for when this is finished? Do you have, uh, are you working up to uh, showing it somewhere? Are you just going to show it in your own studio? Like what kind of, I, I guess I don't know what the process is for a painter or an artist to go, okay, I'm done with this series. Now it's going to go somewhere or I'm going to do something with it. Like what is the next process? Um, so um, for me, I want to show, I have two goals, one showing in New York and then showing in LA. Oh. So these are my thing. Like before that, everything is great. Everything is kind of a step to find that space, like how I can reach there. So that that's my goal. Like uh, I need a gallery in New York to show. And, and the subject matter is just about that. Like I'm in search. I need to be one with that. So... Uh, that will appear that would come or the life would unfold and I would see how I can gain it right now. I'm just working on the paintings and understanding how I can make those and trying to like uh, communicate with people and talking to people, uh, making networks at gallery openings and just trying to engage and showing my work, doing more studio visits. And um, one day it would happen. Like, I don't know how, but uh, I just have a belief that it would. So uh, I need to be ready about that and mm -hmm. uh, keep engaging with people and how I can uh, find that voice or how the universe would conspire to like provide that stage yeah. for me. But my next goal is to have a solo show in New York. Uh, 
Yeah. And you are currently marketing yourself, correct? You don't have anybody helping with finding these things uh, like most people. And, and I just want to ask to make sure, you know, you're, you you would be the one reaching out to these places or setting up the gallery show. Yes. You don't have somebody doing that for you. No, uh, not at the moment. I don't have any manager or people who are helping me, right. but it's mostly about like a network of friends you uh, make on the way and they find some gig and they hook you up yeah. somehow. And uh, like you have a friend who is a curator and that person got a chance to like sh- create, curate a show for a gallery and they would pick up your work mm-hmm. uh, because you are friends. So it's just like networking kind of that. But then you have a show and then like people are coming and they're engaging with your work more uh, or you are selling, you have three pieces and you sold two of them. So the gallery notices it and they're like, maybe we should like work on a two person show or a three person show. And then maybe in the future we can have a solo show. Right. So that's how you like find those steps and you climb um, maybe that, I, I don't know. I'm still figuring out. So right. I feel like this, this is the right way to like find something. No, very um, much so. It's, and I, I will agree. Like, let's put it this way. Um, when you were telling me that you had some new work and you wanted to just come on and talk about art, you just contacted me and I was like, okay, you know, th- that's whereas instead of having a person going, hello, Mr. You know, would like to contact you and uh, be on, you know, and like have somebody in the middle setting this up, which is good in some cases, but in other cases, it's, it, it seems it, it's difficult. It's adding a roadblock. And, uh, but at the same time, and this is why I brought it up is because you're doing all this work and you want to go into this. Uh, you want to do a show in New York and LA. And then I'm just like, Oh, but while you're painting, you also have to set that up. So while you're painting, you can't really do that or prepare that you'll have to do it after you're done painting. And then, you know, it, sorry, my mind, my mind yeah. is spiraling because we're, we can all relate to this. You know, it's just yeah. like, you want to achieve this I thing. You're going to finish it. Every single person who has a dream relate yeah. to this. Like every person who wants to do something out of the, the societal norms or what they, what is already exist. If they want to like branch out and find their own voice or an own space, yeah. uh, they have to deal with this. It doesn't matter if you are like an engineer or a doctor or like a musician or a writer Whatever it is, like you need to like you need to understand those steps you need to take to find that actual goal, and it never stops. Once you are there, you would you want something else, and then you have like another thing to deal with. So it's you're growing, and I think that's the adventure mm-hmm. everybody talks about about life when they talk about life. That life is adventure, and this is the this might be the adventure. What a severely positive outlook on what I was just spiraling about. (laughs) That was very nice. (laughs) I like that. (laughs) It is an adventure. You're right. And each, and and each time you, that's the thing is you don't realize that you've grown from the last time that it happened. And even though it seems like it's difficult, but it's, it's, it's new difficult. It's not like I'm running into the same problems. It's I'm running into another problem because I'm more advanced. And this is what happens when you go more into the future. I don't know. It's yeah. 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 It's I think uh, the difficulty part never going to end. And you need to understand it. Uh, It doesn't matter. I I met like few big artists, like uh, big time artists. And um, I met them and I was like talking about my work and I was like, I need to find this. How can I do it? And they were like, how old are you? You are like so young. Don't worry uh, because uh, you get it sooner. The problems will always rise. It's not going to end. So you, uh, you, you have like lesser problems now in the future. There will be more. It depends on how far you go. And at every step you have different problems to deal with. So even if we are like all settled on financially, and people know us or we have like booking for shows for next two years uh i'm still working for another five years you know Mm -hmm. it's not just about like preparing for these two i need to and i do the same thing you are doing right now is for like another five years yeah so it's never gonna end just enjoy what you are dealing with because this would make your life more happy or you would like remember everything yeah I was like, yeah, okay, that I understand now. <laughs> so it's never going to end. 
Now, with the series that you're doing, do you have a title for it? Do you have, uh, is that something you think of afterwards or do you name the whole series? Like, do you have any ideas of what it's going to be called? Yes. Sometimes I, every time I sketch something, I write like five to six different titles for the painting. Okay. And, but they, by the time I finish the painting, uh, then I look back and try to find like the right words to describe it. But right now the series, like the, when I started making the knees, these new sketches, every page has like on top, it says star kid. So it's it's about a star kid. It's about like some everyone who is dealing with this difficulty, or they want to achieve something, and they are going through this journey of difficulties, and um, they have this hope that everything's gonna be all right, and they will they would they see themselves on the top, and they are ready to deal with everything which comes on their way. Uh, the this set of series is about those people that they are like foreseeing everything which gonna happen in the future and they're living it by enjoying the journey they are going through something like that <laughs> okay and do you have a particular timeline that you want to strive for as far as when you want to finish it I i'm working really slow right now okay. every painting takes like a month to finish uh so probably like it would take this whole year and by that time, I would be more confident to like, okay, this is this is what I am painting, and and during that time, I'm also like making new, meeting new people and finding the right space. And by the time I would find the right space, right set of people to show these this work, and by then these paintings would be ready. And once I get the deadline, I will like just finish it. Yeah. So right now I'm just working on the vocabulary, taking it slow, just enjoying the process and trying to meet as many people I, I can. Okay. And you're going to be sharing this online, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. I I share most of my new paintings on my social media, uh, Pranav Sood Studios. And uh, yeah, and understand the feedback, like what how people are reacting. I have like few art friends who react and give honest uh, feedback to me. So like, uh, so that helps me to understand what, where my thing, is, like a third perspective to like understand where my painting process is going so I can like make it better. Yeah. Yeah. And if people wanted to check it out, where would you, you suggest that they go see it? Um, text me on my social media and we can have a chat and I would love to see their work and talk about it. And, um, but right now, everything is on social media, or you can check out my website, uh, pranavsu.art. And uh, I will like, keep you posted when I will have a show coming up. Okay. And again, thank you so much for talking with me. It was great to talk to you again. I really enjoyed talking to you.